So here's the outline of my research, uh, uh, of my talk today. I'll start with the problem and the proposed approach of our project, and then I'll introduce some uh, mathematical background of the setup of the problem and our results and future work. So to start with, what is the biological problem that we are looking at? We are looking at the problem that in drug design, we found that broader specificity, lower affinity compounds or multi-drug therapies can be more efficient than high affinity, high specificity compounds. And we wish to better understand the effect of drugs on protein-protein interactions. Usually these interactions can be represented as networks and drugs can be modeled as affecting proteins and their interactions in the networks. So there has been a research by Agostone in 2005, which shows that partial inactivation of multiple vertices from a network could be more effective than complete elimination. So we would like we would like to have a statistical model to uh, for those PPI networks, but unfortunately, currently there is none available. The most pro promising candidate now is a duplication divergence model. However, it is still rejected for large networks under multiple Monte Carlo tests and insufficient for modeling protein interaction network evolution. So facing this problem, uh, our group pro proposed an approach that we would like to introduce a new duplication divergence model with string laws. And this, takes, uh, this enables the model to take into account a new biological mechanism, which is the gene laws, and balance the proportion of isolated nodes for more realistic simulations. And I'll discuss later why we focus particularly on the proportion of isolated nodes. So I've set up the biological problem, and the next step is to look at the mathematical tools that we use to model such a problem. So we uh, first uh, we firstly set up three different types of attack. The first type of attack is called complete knockout, where we would remove all the edges connected to a, a vertex vertex, which is randomly selected from a network if we would like to remove it. And the second type of uh, knockout is called partial knockout, where we would randomly remove half of the edges connected to the targeted vertex. And the third type is called distributing knockout, where we will select uh, some edges connected to the target vertex uh, according to a binomial distribution where we can select our ideal K or Q parameters. So these are the three different types of attacks and we'd like to apply them to duplication divergence model. A duplication divergence model would start from a complete graph with T0 nodes where we label them according to the time that we add to the graph. And then we would repeat the following steps until a graph of desired uh, size is ob obtained. So the first step is called duplication. So at time t, we'll randomly select a node u and we'll duplicate it and uh, copy all the edges that are the neighbors of node u at time t. And then the second type, uh, the second step is called duplication divergence, or sometimes we call deletion, where we will remove the edges connected to this newly added node t plus 1 uh, according to a probability p. So this is the standard duplication divergence model, and I've uh, introduced that there are some limitations to this model. So although it has been proved to be more realistic than a GNM uh, model, however, uh, there has been paper that suggested that the proportion of isolated nodes in a DD model either converge to one or zero, and neither of these cases is very realistic. And also, it doesn't take into account of gene loss, which can occur during natural mutations and free shifts and can be adaptive evolutional force that is especially effective when organisms are faced with abrupt environmental challenge. Therefore, our group introduced a new gene loss model where a gene is lost with probability Q1 if it is, if it is isolated in a network. So uh, in this model, this means that if we set Q1 equals 0, we will retrieve the standard duplication divergence model. 
and uh, we would like to run this mode. We would like to run simulations on this new model, the standard duplication divergence model, and real data sites in order to uh, compare their performance. And the data sites we use are two group of data sites. Uh, the first group is uh, E. coli PPI network, which is an undirected, unweighted network. And the second type of uh, network we use is a East PPI network. And we could noticing that the we could notice that the proportion between the vertices and edges suggests that those networks are very sparse, which means that there are many isolated vertices in such PPI network. So this is the reason why we would particularly we would like to particularly focus on the number of isolated vertex in, uh, uh, in our simulations in the later step. And in order to measure how much those attacks would damage the network, we use uh, we, we use the network efficiency to measure damage. And this is uh, the sum of the inverse of the dist of the shortest path between any vertices i and g in a network. So this means that we assume uh, the more distant two vertices, the less efficient of the communication between those two vertices, or in a PPI network between those two proteins. And we also use a successive maximal damage strat strategy to choose the removed vertex from a network. So here are our simulation results. First, we uh, run the attack strategies to the uh, real data sites. And here uh, on the left-hand side, we show the results of the proportion of isolated nodes in a E. coli PPI network. This orange, orange line suggests that we use we apply partial knockout on 10 nodes uh, simultaneously. And those uh, blue line represents that we apply complete knockout to the networks, whereas the green line suggests, the, uh, suggests that we apply partial knockout to five nodes simultaneously. And the red line represents the case where we apply a partial knockout to two nodes simultaneously. And here we see that in both E. coli PPI network and the East PPI network, uh, those uh, proportion of isolated nodes show quite similar trend uh, as we increase the number of attacks. However, if we run the same attacks to our models, on the right hand side, this is the case where Q1 is zero, which is our standard basic duplication divergence model. We could say that only for the case of complete knockout, that the trend is quite similar to the real data sites. But for the weak attacks, the trend is not very realistic compared to the re real data sites. But for our new model, where we have non-zero queues, our results are much more similar to a real-life data set. So this suggests that this new model indeed becomes more realistic than a standard duplication divergence model that was pro uh, previously proposed. So next step is for us to better examine this new model and how it uh, of, at how it affects the uh, model in terms of different types of attacks. So on the sorry, so on the left side, this is the case for where we apply partial knockout, and we could see that the orange line, as we increase the number of attacks, it would outperform the complete knockout represented by the blue lines in terms of the network efficiency. So this suggests that as we increase the number of weak attack target, uh, we would be able to uh, attack and and um, and attack the network more efficiently compared to the case that we just remove one uh, one vertex completely from a network. And on the right hand side, uh, we're we show the case for attenuation. So attenuation is that rather than we remove edges connected to, ta to the target vertex, we would have the weight of the edges of, uh, of, uh, that are connected to the target node. And we realize that still that the case where as we increase the number of weak attack targets, it would, uh, it would produce larger damage to the network more efficiently compared to the complete knockout. So we also looked at the case where we have distributed knockout or distributed attenuation. And here the horizontal line suggests the 
a network efficiency after one complete knockout. And we realized that it would require 11 uh, distributed attacks to generate similar equivalent effect to the uh, to the network. So this suggests that distributed knockout and distributed attenuation are not that effective compared to a complete knockout. However, those two cases, either we remove an edge or we half the weight would, uh, would have similar effect to the network in terms of network efficiency as both just require the same 11 attacks to, uh, to generate the same uh, damage to the network. So here are the interpretation of the results. Firstly, we've shown that our new gene loss model captures the effect of weak attacks more, realistic, re more realistically than a duplication divergence model. And this validates our founding in terms of drug design that indeed broader specificity, lower affinity compounds can be more efficient than high affinity, high specificity compounds. In terms of biological processes and evolution, uh, this suggests that abrupt changes by dilating an unstable node may affect the species evolution lies compared to gradual changes in interactions in the long runs. And finally, in terms of the statistical significance, a next step would be for us to understand better how the newly introduced parameter Q1 affects the network. So here is our next step that we examine the, the effect of Q1 in uh, network efficiency or in damaging the networks. So we've seen that as we uh, increase the Q values, so here the blue line represents the case where Q equals 0 0.2 and the red line is the case where Q equals 0 0.4 and the green line is the case where Q is 0 0.6 and the orange line is the case where Q is 0 0.8. So we've seen that as we increase Q, which means that we increase the probability of deleting an isolated vertex in a duplication divergence model, we would generate higher damage to the network, resulting in a lower network efficiency in a network. And this is similar for both the case where we have partial knockout or partial attenuation and also for distributed knockout and distributed attenuation, the same results hold. So, the, so these are all the simulation results. The future work of this would then be to examine the gene loss model further through theoretical analysis and also to investigate if there are other parameters that can affect a gene loss in a network. For example, maybe a pair of genes that are isolated in a duplication network could be lost with a certain probability and it may be able to make the network further realistic and and of course, uh, besides gene loss, there are other biological functions that are uh, uh, biological mechanisms that are yet taken into account into this model and can be further investigated too. And here are the references of this work. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I actually have quite a few questions. Um, so one of the things I was curious about is in this um, data to generate the protein-protein interaction networks. I don't know if it's still the case, but historically it was very noisy and it was also quite incomplete. So you'd have a sub-network of the actual network. Is that something that you think could affect your results in any way? Uh, yes, indeed, it would definitely affect the results like uh, the different data sets. But as we've shown that for different data sets under different types of attacks, similar conclusions hold. So it would mainly affect the uh, absolute number or the absolute damage uh, attack uh, uh, generated to the network, but not in terms of the general conclusion. And yes, the data sets, they are changing all the time. And here the data sets used are the same used by the first reference there, just to uh, cross compare and validate the results with the previous research. Very uh, basic question. I didn't understand what the networks here were showing. Is it interactions between different amino acids in the same protein or different genes coding for different proteins? Uh, it's the interaction between different proteins. 
So uh, in a network, the, uh, each node suggests one protein and an, uh, an edge connected between two nodes suggesting an interaction between those two proteins. So what, what kind of an interaction? Just that they sometimes meet in the cell's metabolic cycle? or? Yeah, so uh, it, uh, it's not in terms of amino acids or those, it's just that uh, if these two uh, proteins would interact, like not in terms of the biological sense, it's just the protein-protein interaction between them. Um, I was wondering, so when you did your simulations uh, and you said that one was for um, yeast and the other one was for a different uh, organism, were you having to fit the parameters of your model to those individual networks or were you just assuming the parameters of your model Oh yeah. So for the parameter of for the parameter, there has been previous research suggests that Q1 may be set around zero point three, may be a quite appropriate value. But in my research, I actually searched for all different uh, numbers uh, for different numbers uh, values of Q. So I looked at the case where Q ranges from zero to zero point two, zero point four six eight, and also for different probability of P ranging from 0 to 1. Uh, the same conclusion holds, but uh, in terms of the uh, behaviors, there are actually um, different values that would result in different uh, behaviors. So there are critical thresholds, uh, especially in the case if whether in a duplication divergence model, we connect the parent and the child node. So in the model here I introduced, there is no interact, uh, there is no age introduced when we duplicate a uh, new node with its original parent. But if we introduce such a age, such an age, then the behavior would be much changed from what we uh, from what we see. Uh, to the model that I show here, but still, it's it's more realistic compared to the orig the basic duplication divergence model. Yeah, so there are different parameters to and critical threshold to different behaviors, but yeah, the the conclusions the, the same. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so let's thank we have again. Um,